DD214 Network Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Network is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now, because we have you. It's a hell of a week, ladies and gentlemen, and we've survived another day, and we so did of, you. It was it was kind of a busy week. Like when Joe was kind of yeah. running over some of the things we, we were going to cover today, I was like, "Oh yeah, that was all this week." That was a lot like, of shit was, happened this week. Yeah, a, lo- a lot of shit happened this week, and then we and we still have stuff to talk about from last week uh, because of uh, there was two nights of WrestleMania. You know what I mean? So yeah. We got something yeah. from last Sunday. We got I mean? fallout. Fallout. Fucking the, fallout. The, the right. eclipse. Fucking OJ. You know what I mean? OJ. Fucking. Fucking crazy people thinking they're going to get raptured, tip, and tipping tipping $1,000, and then asking for the fucking tip money back. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that man. is That's just insane. Like a dick move. That's like a straight dick. That is literally just a straight dick move. But, you know, we'll get, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. How are you guys doing? How was your guys' week? Oh, dude, I'm living the dream. I'm try- my my lighting sucks today. I'm sorry about that. We're just gonna we're gonna be Batmaning it up. We're gonna be Christopher Nolan this shit today because hey man, I'm, black is beautiful. I mean, if that's the case, hold on. Oh, there we go. Oh, we're all going Christopher Nolan. Not all right. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we're gonna fucking do this. We'll do it all the way. I'm all about the darkness on me. So oh I'm, yeah, I'm cool with it. Like I I mean, you guys know you guys know how the fuck I roll. So. I mean, I'm, <laughs> Like, wow, that's gonna drive me insane. I can't we, fucking we, see shit. Yeah, <laughs> killing me right now. This is <laughs> this is the all right. We're we're here though. I mean, shit, Sean, what... I'm sending you some fucking key lights from Elgato. Fuck this shit, <laughs> dude. I'm ready. I started messing around with this new cooler I got, and it's got like I you know because I got the HC hundred Capilix HT XT, and it's you know. First off, the fact that you could change the plates. Uh, where the hell are my replacement plates? Right? I'm old. Oh, here they are. The, the, these like little replacement plates that it gives you. Yeah. That's fucking cool. And but I got the one with the little like hexagons on it and shit like that. Really nice stuff. Really nice stuff. I mean, the computer is running so good, man. And I appreciate your help when we spoke. Uh, when we spoke in the chat, melting Jay's brain. Uh, in the process of doing it, but we're we're yeah. back, baby. We're back I, in action. Just want to remind you guys, it's not hard to melt my brain when you're talking about like all that tech shit, dude. Because I'm just like, okay, <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. Just like, like it literally, like it's not that I, it's not that I don't like it. It's not that I don't appreciate it. It's that like I'm that fucking clueless about it. So it just like my brain does this weird thing where it just immediately walks out of the room and shuts the door behind itself. You know what I mean? When yeah, like, mm-hmm. I got nothing. I got nothing when it comes to tech. I got nothing. Like, I bring nothing to the table. <laughs> nothing. Shit. Well, let's go in order, man. We um, we had WrestleMania this week, this, this last yeah, week. Yeah, you, you guys actually convinced me to watch night two. I ended up watching night mm-hmm. two because of you two guys and the way you talked about last week's Saturday event. 
on the on the on the show when you guys were talking about it on the show last week. You guys basically convinced me to fucking watch WrestleMania uh, Sunday night, and it was fucking amazing. I was I was shocked at like how it's changed, but like mm-hmm. they do it so much differently now. You know what I mean? Than like when when we were younger, when we were growing up. Like I haven't touched professional wrestling yeah. in a long time. I didn't know half the people that were out there. Didn't know like you know hardly any of them. But it was like it was extremely compelling, uh, very nostalgic. They did a great fucking job. Every fucking match, every match was good, including and as much as I hate to admit this, <clears throat> fucking Logan Paul's a good fucking professional wrestler. Holy shit! Like there's like no fucking denying it. Like that dude, that dude. He put on it like he was in a fucking match with Randy Orton and some other fucking guy. And then they weren't carrying Kevin Owens, him. whatever. They weren't carrying him like they were like he was carrying himself. Yeah, they, they were yeah, all I mean, doing their own thing. And which actually to me, that was the most funniest and comedic and entertaining match other than, the, you know, what happened at the main event, which we'll get to. But like that right. match alone, I mean, it was funny. When- I think I think the funny the what really took it over the top was when we found out it was fucking I show speed who's a fucking streamer and uh, uh, over was, the top ridiculous the, one too. Yeah, and he was the he was the one in the prime bottle costume that came to the ring with Logan and then he barks at fucking Randy Orton. Randy Orton then fucking RKO or yeah, he RKO'd him on the fucking back on the at him. tables. But before he RKO'd him, he fucking barked right back at him. And I just fucking died at that part. I was like, the Viper just fucking barked. What the fuck is this fucking shit? And it was just it was great. That that match was good. Um, the women's division, the D- they don't call it the diva division anymore. They're not the divas. They're now... It's the women's division, and even the women's division's gotten a lot better over the years than it used to be. Um, the, I've watched some interviews here lately. It's a showcase. It's a and, showcase, man. And the women, there's been times the women have been told, hey, you need to, you know, calm it down a little bit. You're out, sh- you're out showing the men. Like, you're, you're doing things that are making the men like why the fuck how the fuck what the fuck where the fuck kind of situation it's and, awesome i mean obviously the big thing with this wrestlemania was this is the first wrestlemania of the new paul levesque era or triple h era of wwe you got the oh, french yeah. you got the french it out man it's levesque paul levesque 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 yeah, fucking. I mean, you, could, you know, whatever. you could say you could say Levisque too. I mean, it's not my name, but it's you know this 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 year of WrestleMania probably because I typically every year do end up watching WrestleMania just to just, just, just to fucking watch it. Childhood yeah. memory tech bullshit. And this year, <laughs> it's got me wanting to actually start watching, you know, some of the regular, like, the syndicated TV agreed. stuff. Like, yeah, I, I was like, if, follow the stories a little bit closer, because... If they could put on... Go ahead, I'm sorry. If, sorry. Holy fuck, if they didn't put on one hell of a fucking show for the yeah. first... Uh, for the first WrestleMania after, you know, the whole Vince McMahon's been outed, yeah. and the whole fucking regime's changed hands... It's like, I can only imagine what they're going to do through the remainder of the year, the next set of pay-per-views, the Raws, the SmackDowns, everything going into next year when Raw comes over to Netflix now, because starting next year, Raw is going to be on Netflix. Right. Major major multi-million dollar deal too, by the way. Yeah. And we've, and we've, well, and we've, we've uh, discussed that on this show like yep. they, they, that was coming and then well it, it was such it was such a spec a spectacle and like and like joe was saying it, it did make me a little curious i was like well fuck if this is wrestlemania if the goddamn house shows or fucking you know raw or whatever if they're half as good as this they'll still be fucking entertaining you know what i mean like it kind of mm-hmm. like it, it kind of enticed me a little bit to like maybe you should go check out some of these new fucking wrestlers, because like I have no, I had no fucking idea who basically anybody was. You know what I mean? I enjoyed it. 
I really had a good time watching it. There was a fucking shitload of nostalgia and, you know, like got me, got me choked up a couple times. Like remembering like yeah. my, my, my glory days of like, you know, being like an elementary well, school, like, well, you know, let's like, get to it. Let's get to that part. Then the, the, that special, I mean, fuck the main event. The main event was great. Congratulations. Cody the, the Rhodes. End of the main event made that fucking like first off props to rains and roads they beat the ever living holy hell out of each other really for fucking that was what, a long 35, match. almost 40 fucking minutes that was and a then, long long fucking match yeah and that then fucking the match. rock comes out solo sokoa comes out john cena comes out seth rollins comes out to the shields fucking theme yeah. fucking at first, I was like, holy shit, did John oh, yeah, I... come back to WWE when the fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. fucking theme came on? Because Roman Reigns, his old faction when he first came into WWE was the S.H.I.E.L.D. Yep. With Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, his his name under AEW's John Moxley. But I, when, when the S.H.I.E.L.D. theme played, I didn't expect it to be fucking Rollins. Because I was like, they're really going all out for this at this point. I was like, we're getting fucking Dean Ambrose. He's fucking back. And then it was Rollins. And I'm like, hey, still, it is what it is. Rollins threw on his old fucking ring gear from the Shield days, did that. And then. And dyed his hair, too. Yeah. And then the fucking gong. That was Rock's crazy. about to start lashing, um, giving fucking Rhodes a fucking public lashing on, in the ring with his fucking weight belt and the gong. And fucking The Rock looked like he shit himself. They did. That was one thing I noticed is there was a lot less overselling on this. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't see the overselling. Like that everyone sold each other's shit, but they yeah. were, but they but they weren't overselling. And that was what that was that, that to me that made a big absolutely difference. right. That made a big difference to me was like from watching from watching professional wrestling like you know, 80s going into the early 90s and then late 90s during the Attitude Era and then basically nothing since the Attitude Era. Basically nothing. A couple a couple things here, a couple things there. Functionally nothing in about like almost 20, 25 years mm -hmm. of professional wrestling. I haven't fucking seen shit. And to come back at WrestleMania 40 and watch it was like, oh shit. Like that's, this is fucking cool. Like yeah. this is fun, and like yeah. and, and, and they like they really embraced the performance art aspect of professional wrestling. It is performance art. It was fun, and they performed, and it was like that's that's what that's what sold it to me was like they they sold their performances. Mm -hmm. They sold they sold each other. You know what I mean? Like they, oh my god, dude! That they knew the but, assignment. Yes, yeah. and, and 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 Reigns and Reigns and Rhodes fucking main event match was so over the top and if they had tried if they had tried to do that 20 25 years ago it never would have worked it, it never would have worked people would have called it cheap they would have called it freaking um i don't know what like whatever too over the top I, too over the top now i will the say fans are like clamoring for exactly that kind of shit yeah and it fit and it fit and it fit the time it fit the time frame that we're in you know what i mean and it was perfect and they and, and they they and when Joe, Joe was not lying, they beat the fucking holy piss out of each other. They even even for it being performance art, those two assholes beat the the fucking shit out of each other like hard. Yeah, that was like I I'm I'm glad they don't I'm glad they don't show pictures of like their back their backs and their rib cages like the day after because like they're just bruised. Like they have to yeah. be they have to be just bruised head to fucking toe head to toe. There's no fucking mm -hmm. way. There's just no fucking way. And I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's, you know, wrestlers, I've, I watch a lot of interviews with past WWE superstars and stuff too. And they say, you know, yes, it's, it's scripted. It's, you know, we have a script we're going off of, right. but you're still landing fucking hits on each other. You're still getting hurt. Yeah. It's I, kind of hard. I, I'd even like. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jay. I, I was just going to say, it's kind of hard to jump off of a fucking ladder onto like fucking cement. Yeah. Yeah. And not fucking do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're gonna uh, uh, you still have to land. Go ahead, John. On, I'm sorry. On Go top ahead. of that, like the, the minuscule training that I did do, I remember the first bump I took, 
that shit hurt like a motherfucker. And a mm-hmm. hundred other times I had to take it for the time that I was there. It hurts. The ropes hurt. I mean, you know, you're, you're legitimately taking acting and adding combat sport to it. Wrestlers are literally just stuntmen that all they do is fucking take hits. Yep. I mean, basic, basically, yes. And th- and like the whole, that's the whole art. The whole art is to make people believe that it's real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, and that's, yes, there's a little bit of suspension of disbelief or suspension of dis- disbelief, but that's, it's whatever. That's, that's part of, that's, the crowd is in on it. Also, the crowd was amazing. I forgot to mention the fucking crowd. They were the crowd. singing the tunes. Oh, they the, were the, they were popping and locking, dude. Like the crowd, like that's the other beautiful mm-hmm. thing about professional wrestling. The crowd is part of the fucking show. The crowd is part of the show. So, so like when they get yeah. when they get when they get like when when they get pops for some of the guys, you know, or whatever, like you can hear it. You can tell like the crowd is like into it. And that's mm-hmm. you know that Again, with the nostalgia. That's all I'm saying. Like, the nostalgia yeah. factor was there. And I think... Like, go ahead. The the best part for me was definitely Taker fucking coming back out for a WrestleMania appearance after he retired and just choke slamming the fuck out of The Rock. Like... <laughs> that was that fun. was That was fun. I mean, that entire... Again, that entire fucking match from start to finish phenomenal you know props to all of the entertainers involved not just Raidens and Rhodes because you know they everybody knew their part in that match right like they 100% with the Saturday night when they did the tag team match to determine if it was going to be bloodline rules or no interference from anybody they set it up perfectly for all these other appearances at that point in the end for Rhodes to take the championship. Yep. They did. And oh I think they went and they and I I've got I gotta say I, I agree with their choice of how to end WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. If it had been anything less than a happy ending like this just specifically this year. Specifically this year. If yeah. it had been anything less than a happy ending like they would have they would have really sold themselves short. And they didn't. Mm-hmm. They fucking they gave everybody like the storybook, f- feel good, you know, fairy tale happy ending. Like that was like that was yeah. perfect. That was good. The only thing and missing, was, the only thing missing, and I noticed it was Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> the only thing missing was Dustin Rhodes, and I was like, well, some some uh, some issues like some issues freaking take a little bit longer to heal, I guess. So, but that mm-hmm. was that was interesting to see that you know. The, basically the first the first roads to 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 be heavyweight champion you know what i mean and dustin was nowhere to be found that night and it was like and there was actually there's act there was actually uh news on that too apparently the wwe aw claims that wwe never asked um and then and then aw continued to do a bunch of weird stuff throughout the week which i don't know if you heard what, what they did i heard a little bit about the aw i heard a, i heard that they uh what was the thing that happened the other night? They uh, released they released footage of an yes. encounter that CM Punk, Punk. had. Punk, yes. And this, you know, yes. it's kind of petty. You know, it's kind of like, well, you know, he's not with the company anymore. Like, what are you doing? Everyone, mm-hmm. you know, no one wanted to talk about it. It, you know, it was just one of those things. It's like a, it's like a workplace thing when two when two, yeah. when you see your two friends fight. You know, you just you don't talk about it ever again. And Tony Khan decided to release that footage, and the young bucks. Um, Matt and Nick Jackson didn't even want to be a part of it, but they apparently were told to be a part of it. And then there was a bunch of shit talking between another wrestler named Will Ospreay, uh, who was saying a bunch of stuff in response to something that Triple H had said. But we don't know if Triple H was yeah. directly mentioning him. You know, it could you know it could literally be anybody that he right. was talking about. It's two competing companies in the same fucking arena, pretty much. They're Reminds gonna the be good old days, right? Yeah, it's 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 bringing fucking good old ECW and fucking WWF vibes. Like we're we're that's what it's doing, and honestly, that's the type of shit wrestling needs right now. Because you know, we look at we look at WrestleMania fucking Saturday and Sunday, fucking Triple H 
made sure his company fucking performed. His yep. his and his God, and my, performed, and my God he did performed, they. His staff performed. They they fucking did. They did. I would say this WrestleMania, WrestleMania forty, a hundred percent down in the fucking WrestleMania history books. Agree. Hard yeah. agree. As one of the as one of the best WrestleManias of all time. It's not, and, it's not even close. It's not even close right now. It's like that. Show me, show me a WrestleMania, other than like maybe a couple of the early ones where it was still yeah. like a, fr- like well, a, yeah. a relatively new and kind of fresh concept. Show me any well, other yeah. WrestleMania that like beats beats that. Just night two, just night two, because you guys, I still didn't see night one. I was just watching the second night. There were two nights. Yeah, show me the one that beats it. Like, and I had I, said, and I had said too, it's going to be hard even, for night one to be topped. And my God, they fucking threw a bone. Oh, bro! When I, dude, I had there, there, I was, I, I laughed, I fucking cried. You know what I mean? Like I got, I, I got into it again. I got fucking into it again. You know what I mean? I like, honestly, you know? because I've been following Cody Rhodes since you know his debut in WWE, through him leaving, going back to the indie circuit. Helping form AEW with Tony time, Khan. There was a there was a time nobody, nobody there was a time nobody thought he was coming back. No, he would have never come back to, to WWE. He would have he would have been just everybody thought because he <laughs> thought he left because they made it seem like when he left after they did him wrong with with the Stardust character that he left on bad terms and there was never going to be a Rhodes back in the WWE because. You got to think that's when Dustin left WWE also. Dustin dipped out when they did Cody the way they did Cody. He was like, I'm out. And fucking Cody comes back. He's fought. He's fucking battled. (laughs) Cody's first W uh, WrestleMania (laughs) appearance after coming back, he had a torn pectoral muscle. Yeah, you yeah. you want to you want to see a picture? I you want to see a picture I took of Cody Rhodes a couple years ago, right yeah. after he left WWE. Absolutely. So I was it. working and an an event, and I was little inches inches behind Cody Rhodes. Mm-hmm. You you know you it's all there, and that night he's actually wearing his Zelda gear too. <laughs> which, was, which was actually awesome. the gear it, you know if you know the history it was the gear that he was trying to debut in the wwe before he left and all that whole thing but <clears throat> the one thing i remember from that night is that after that match ended cody rhodes stood in the ring in this little little knights of columbus theater they didn't charge nobody for an autograph and just sat there and took pictures with everybody yeah that's good shit. One thing I will I will say about the Rhodes family is Dusty raised his kids right. Oh, hard agree. Hard fucking agree. Like, Cody, Dustin, even their sister fucking are amazing. The you know, his sister's not in the sports entertainment era area, doesn't do any of that shit, but I teared up when fucking Cody won Sunday and took the I championship. Did. I did too. I was thinking, I was thinking I was about like, I was thinking about Dusty the whole time. Yeah, I'm sitting there like Dusty is looking down right now, fucking smiling, jumping around, fucking proud as shit of his kid right now. I got you, John. John, there's gonna be something incoming to the podcast chat. Like, keep going, Joe. I'm sorry. And you, you guys might have already seen this actually, but I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it. Uh, and I, um, I just want to throw yeah. a big shout out too because um, there was a wrestler who in the first match named Damian Priest who cashed in his money in the bank. Yes, I just want to give a big shout out to New Jersey's own New Jersey. Yeah, I was gonna okay. say that was, that's your boy, right? There it hey, is. What a zoom beautiful in on that shit. Zoom in on that shit. Yep. It won't zoom in much further than that. What? Why does technology suck? 
It always sucks. There it is. There's that clear, beautiful photo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shit. Him hugging like, his... Fucking, and Dust, Dusty's just like, yeah. Dusty's looking mm-hmm. down, dude, like, just freaking proud as shit. Proud as shit. Like, freaking, like, it. that is the American dream. Like, the real American dream is to, like, watch your family thrive. You know what I mean? And and move and move on and like and know that they'll be okay when you're gone. Well, and then that's the real American dream, right? So yeah. of course I ended up I watched, you know, the press conferences after night two. I watched the night one and the night two press conferences. And when Cody came out to talk, he was wearing a gold Rolex that was gifted to him by Triple H and fuck, what's his name? One of the other big people in the corporate I, area. I think it was. I think it was Nick Khan. Nick Khan. It was. It was Triple H. Nick Khan. Who, who doesn't? Else. Who doesn't have any relation to Tony Khan? By the way, it's yeah. it's actually it's hilarious. It's it's fucking funny. But they bought the exact same year, make, and model of Rolex that Dusty had pawned. So he could send Cody down to Florida to the developmental training or to be able to get him into WWE. They bought that exact same watch and gifted it to Cody after he won the fucking match. Like, and that alone shows, you know, the respect everybody had for Dusty in WWE. I mean, all these superstars that Jay, even, I don't even know half of them to either. All of them, before Dusty died, they were being trained in NXT by Dusty. Right. Like, Dusty was one of the trainers down in Florida for NXT. Right. For all the, you know, new upcoming guys. Well, and, he, was, he, was giving back, he was giving back to the industry. You know what yeah. I mean? He was giving back to the industry that gave him his life. And this obviously before he passed, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like you said, like you can tell he raised his kids right. You can tell he raised his fucking wrestlers right. You yeah. can tell he raised his fucking wrestlers right. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it, it's, always, it's easy to see, you know? He, all, he, he was quoted at one point as saying the wrestlers he's, he trains are just as much his family as his regular family. He would right. give the shirt off his back to any of the wrestlers he trained, to anybody in the fucking organization, right? If they needed it, and Cody, he he has that same mentality, and it's yeah. great. Like yeah. I'm interested to see where Cody goes from here, because now you know he's achieved that I wanna, goal. I want to see where the, the championship. I want to see now. Like what's what's the storyline? I want to see the, the the championship storyline for Cody. Yeah, going over the next couple of years. Yeah, there's Even been rumors. Know, there's been rumors is, that he's going to change the belt too. That there's going to be a belt redesign. He's right. wanting to go back to the uh, the, 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 the yep the eagle the, really a winged eagle fucking belt really from back in the day. Yeah, because the heavyweight championship kind of kind of is reminiscent of the old WCW one. My favorite was always the NWA ten pounds of gold. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the fucking the big the big fucking just my f- I've always loved the intercontinental one. Hey, real quick before we transition. Yeah. I just sent you a link. Did you see the fucking Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje fight last night? I did not. I completely forgot about it. I think you should watch this highlight because I just sent you a clip. If you can like attach the highlight. And I think it's like probably like 20 some seconds long. Like just Turn the sound off, because you're gonna you're gonna fucking you're gonna die when you see what happened. You're gonna die when you see what happened. Like seriously, like you're 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 literally gonna be like, yeah. This is so. I, this, so is this is the belt. So this is a photo. Hold on, that's the belt that Cody's wanting to bring back for the championship, and it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I remember. I mean. That style, you know what I mean? Like that's why mm-hmm. that's yeah. the, that's that's the belt that we, that's what that was the belt for the majority of my childhood. Yeah, 
And then Ric Flair brought the 10 pounds of gold over, right? Like from fucking NWA slash WCW. And like, I wish they had fucking like kept that shit. You know what I mean? That was the, that, that was like the sickest looking fucking heavyweight belt. Like to me, to me. What was your, what was your guys' favorite fucking uh, championship belt? Mine is the Attitude Era Intercontinental Championship, the Oval. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have my favorite. So so we're asking this. My favorite, it's it's a newer one that's no longer around. The 24 hour championship. It was legitimately they tried bringing in a belt that just 24 7. 365 was up for grabs so like if you had the title and you were at the fucking shopping mall shopping another wrestler could come and fucking pin you and take the fucking belt from you right they did some pretty cool shit with that it was it it, i more liked it because of the 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 differing factor in that championship than any other championship belt. I could see the gimmick. Yeah, was, I could see. I could see the gimmick for sure. And it didn't work that well. I think they only did it for like a year, and then they got rid of the fucking championship altogether because there was some crazy shit that kept happening with people trying to get that fucking title. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, it that. was it was up for grabs by both the men's and women's division. So it didn't matter whether it was a man or a woman. They could pin whoever had the title and take that shit. What are you finding, John? What are you All finding? right. So I saw I just saw the clip. I, <coughs> I found this. Yeah. Did, did, with once once did with one second left. I I like what the wow fuck? you do, can you show the clip can you show the clip let's see if we could try to show it just turn the, I... just turn them yeah like mute it but like just turn the that way we don't get a how the fuck what there the you fuck? go the fuck? why the fuck how the hell yeah this is the last couple seconds couple right seconds. here yep out gone I just slept him. Boom. That's it. Was that fucking video like sped up because No, it, it wasn't. Like, was it like three time fucking speed? It, it it wasn't even sped up. That's the crazy part. That's how like fast they were swinging yeah. like motherfuckers right there. Yeah. They went like they like Gage, Gage went out on his fucking shield and fucking Max Holloway like added to his own legend like it was fucking insane. I was I was just getting off for context. I was just getting off work last night. I worked the uh, the the soccer game at Arrowhead Stadium yesterday because fucking Messi was here. So they had the soccer game instead of having it at their own fucking stadium on the Kansas side. They decided to have a game at Arrowhead yesterday, so I did that. Um, but I was getting off work last night, and I saw that goddamn clip, and I was like, oh, my fucking God. It's like he literally got knocked out with one second left. Like, in a five-round That's crazy. In a five-round fight. Which almost went to decision. Which almost went to a decision. It literally one second left. And they fucking threw down for the last 10 seconds. And Max Holloway is known for doing that shit. That's like his bread and butter. Yeah. And and, and it capitalized. God damn. God damn, dude. That was hardcore. That looked like a fucking crazy fight. Yeah. John, what do we got? John, what do we got next? You know what? I, I can't hold it anymore. Are we gonna spoiler alerts? You want to talk about Fallout? No, no, because I know you guys haven't finished it. Oh no, I finished it. I haven't even oh. start I haven't even started. Like I don't put the spoiler alert up. Cause I know Jay don't care. I don't give a fuck. Like I, so, I can already tell like everyone's everyone's like everyone's like coming coming buckets over this fucking TV show. I never played the game. You and you know what? The I, best like, part, I, I won't give a fuck. I won't yeah. I will likely not give a fuck one so, way or the other about this. Like, the best part about this is that you could have gone in without playing the fucking games. Because it doesn't take place during any of the games. Yeah. 
it's just the setting and the setting is the world has gone to shit and there are weird things that are happening and i i, I want to hear before i start sucking its dick i want to hear what squalini thought so all right so we're in the era now we've moved on from superhero fucking bullshit we're now in video game fucking movie era we've had the last of us we've had halo now we've got fallout um there's a borderlands movie coming out soon super mario sonic yeah super mario sonic we're getting fucking you know video game to movie or tv show adaptations with the fallout series someone that has played some of the games not all of them because i haven't played the original dos fucking rpg top down style ones um which you can get for free on game pass not affiliated but this show a i was disappointed with halo oh i don't even i I, we can't i don't even want to talk it's it's totally disappointed with halo fucking last of us phenomenal obviously we all three you know we reviewed last of us as it was airing we all thought it was a good show good it was really good this one even one upped fucking last of us so far hands down best video game to tv adaptation they've done um the storyline was good a bold statement i don't believe you like that's a bold statement like i might watch an episode i might watch an episode just to like based off of that like that's a bold fucking the last of us was like fucking art like i'm gonna hold you to that they want to make you remember your words just a little i'm not saying it was like i have to agree i have to agree it was just a little bit but it was it's now set the bar for season two of last of us to have to come in swinging dick even further well there so so you know this show good storyline great um goggins as the fucking ghoul hilarious he stole the show he did his character in in as a whole fucking stole the show oh um, J- joe did did the ghoul kind of remind you at certain times of jay oh god like yeah, where there's kinda, like where there's some moments really had some jay mentality and fucking mannerisms yeah oh boy well now yeah. i have to, now i now i have to fucking see this shit yeah, no, because th- like the ghoul is interesting because like he's tough as nails and he shows that on the outside and like that that little bit of soft side, he doesn't show it to anybody, only himself. And it's very it's a very interesting character development of a of a man who mm-hmm. who's been alive for prob we'll say 270 years given his age of when the bombs dropped it's was, it's was he a character in the fucking video game no Mm-mm. this is just a made up like from tv show kind of thing every every there was not one video game character in this show uh, there was dog meat but do, but it but the thing about dog meat is that traditionally dog do you know how like you call a dog a mutt yeah that's like that's like what their word is in the Fallout universe of what dog meat is. Because every dog in fucking in Fallout is dog meat, going all the yeah. way back from 1997's uh, first Fallout game. Well, see, I did like I did like that one scene. It was a very split little part where they showed like the dog meat training facility, so to speak. I love that. The that was where the they were, center. Yeah, know, that was and fucking training these dogs to be companions for people after the fucking nuclear apocalypse yeah and what's cool about that scene is that that was the the little bit of enclave that we have and the enclave is the last remnants of the original u.s government and they're training dogs it was actually kind of interesting mm-hmm. uh, but it, i'm so happy to hear that you're that you are enjoying it what did you think of like the practical effects like there's obvious green screen and blue screen in there oh, yeah but the majority um, of the film was the, the majority of the show was like practical and everything m- the majority of the things that you see on screen was there except I, obviously the monsters i would say 
practical practical effects were good. Um, even though there was obvious points where they're CGI and fucking green screening it, they didn't overdo it. I mean, when when we're looking at post apocalyptic world, obviously to bring that to life, there's going to be a lot of CGI and green screen. However, they didn't over CGI it to where it looked like it was CGI. They they did it right to make it seem like it was realistic. It it was realistic looking CGI. Um, the Brotherhood of Fucking Steel. Amazing. Gotta jump right fucking like toe toes first head first right into that fucking amazing the way they fucking brought the armor to fucking life yeah great because they made it look like something our government could fucking actually end up doing yeah and making for our troops I, to wear I, in fucking combat i bet they got a lot of fucking ideas now <laughs> um and just the ending of it i mean finding out the whole that technically the ghoul and the main vault dweller's dad are connected knew each other are connected because the main vault dweller who's out trying to save her dad which is the whole premise of this this season this because there's going to be another season they can't just fucking end it where yeah california end. granted the production um Chris, uh, jonathan nolan's production company a 25 mm-hmm. million dollar california tax credit so, uh, so what does that mean oh that mean that means that they got the money they have a boost <laughs> into making the next season if if they decide to do it but which, you okay. know her her dad was is just as old as the fucking ghoul at this point. We find that out because he worked for vault and, and the ghoul, his, his character before the fucking bomb drop, his wife worked for fucking vault tech. Yeah. Like they were all connected in ways too. And it was interesting and fun and just, it I kept you like, I felt like I was watching I more play. Yeah. yeah. I, I want more. Like, I feel like eight episodes was not enough for this first season. And there were so many teases, too. There were so many fun little things. Like, what? Like. All right. So, look, the spoil the spoiler thing is up there. And there's been a huge controversy about New Vegas. I don't know if you've been reading the stuff, Squilini, but I'm going to say something right now that people need to understand. They did not retcon New Vegas. We don't even know what the ending of New Vegas is because there is no actual ending to New Vegas. Mm -hmm. So they could do whatever the fuck they want. So I'm sorry that your little precious city is destroyed. Um, But amongst that, it was it went from action adventure to drama to sci fi it was funny it was sad it was exciting it was controversial it was i mean animals were getting killed uh uh, uh, one of the one of the first scenes when you see the brotherhood of steel is a soldier jerking off in his bunk you know but one of the best things that i love about this that what they did so good better than last of us is that let's say there was a moment right that was getting really dark and uncomfortable All of a sudden, they would start playing like the old school 1940s music and like blood would be spilling and then it would start getting comical. And I think they found a really good way to take that discomfort away from you in a funny way. You know, it was it was it was fun. And I just want to add in, too, I've said I said this on the show before when I visited the, the Staten Island set, the Super Duper Mart set. Seeing that set in the show and then realizing, oh, shit, Walton Goggins and uh, the vault dweller, um, Ella Purnell, were there. It was like, wow, they were there. They Like, we were probably standing in the same hundred feet that these characters were, were in. And seeing everything else just come to life was so cool. Um, the Easter eggs, the actors, the, the drama. I... 
I obviously look out of out of bias. This, if I didn't know anything about Fallout, you can learn everything in these eight episodes. And I look forward was, to watching the first one and giving the first negative Fallout review ever, like next week. Yeah, and nothing, and nothing, nothing I've read about it up to this point has given me like any reason to watch it. Same reason I never played the games. Like it was well, like I, I don't. It, well, it's do, like, do I'll you try like? It. Not, I'll try it. Do you like I, comedy? I, I, I don't. I don't think it's gonna work. I don't do like. You, let me ask you this: Do you like? Do you like westerns? Yeah, uh, listen, John. Do, you don't got to sell me on this shit, dude. Like I'm, you, I'm you, you. It, you I, I've watched sold. previews. I've watched previews. Based on the previews alone, I would have never watched the show. I would have never touched it. Yeah, I've watched friends play Fallout. Not a fan of the game. That's why mm. I never fucking picked it up. Like, mm. it's not a game I enjoy watching other people yeah. play. Yeah, and again, you I, don't. I watch. I, I watch our our friend of the show, Chris Bodet, play all the way through Last of Us because that Actually, was a cool fucking game. Like, since you since you like, spoke, all, all, you, all you like Fallout dick suckers, dude. Like, I'm sorry, dude, but like nothing about this show, the games, anything has ever fucking done anything for me. I actually like, got a message here from Chris Bodet last night. Yeah, he's he's on the game. He's on the this fucking show's dick too. I got. Yep. I'm, I'm looking forward to like not enjoying this because like, and if it, and if it does, if I do enjoy it, good. You know, like props props to the people who made the show. I don't think it's gonna. I really don't think it's gonna happen, dude. I really don't. Like, it's like, I'm telling you, like, I got a bad feeling. Be... I, I got a bad feeling about this one, bro. I got a bad feeling. Yeah, about I mean, it. well, like, I, outside of your fucking negativity, every single website. And every single well, review that means, that means fucking anything ever. Because I mean, talking- it, I mean, it okay. kind of does. I mean, even Squalini. So here, Squalini say that it was, and 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 like I do agree, it was a very minuscule. I would like to say twenty five percent better, but you yeah. know, they 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 found ways I to twenty five. I would say maybe ten. Ten's reasonable. Ten's plus. reasonable. Ten's reasonable. I watched, I watched I watched night two of WrestleMania because of how you guys were talking about it last week. I don't believe I don't I don't believe any of this fucking hype about this goddamn show. I hey, really school. don't. I, be, I believe zero of the fucking hype. I mean, the when do we think Jay's gonna actually just start fucking listening to us when we say it something's good? Never because I'm, because I'm, I typically, a, typically we usually say when this I shit and then he goes and fucking watches something and then he agrees. This oh my shows, god, I should have fucking listened to you guys. Literally just shows how much you guys don't fucking pay attention about me. When I have a bad feeling, it's usually fucking like something. It's there's standing behind it. Like I already knew, I I would or wouldn't like X, Y, or Z, right? You know the way the way you guys are talking about this is not the way you were talking about night one of WrestleMania last week. It's not enticing me. None of the previews of the show have fucking mm. enticed me. Not a single one. The previews not were me to fuck off too. Listen, dude. Listen, the game was not interesting mm. to me at all. I don't care how many of you Fallout fuckers are out there, dude. Like I don't give a fuck. I'm about opinion, to start playing right opinion, now. I've seen what makes you people cheer. Oh, we're live okay? on the fucking air. <laughs> your, 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 your booze mean nothing to me. I've seen what makes you guys cheer. Mm. Like, I could mm. care less how many people are on this show's dick. Like, mm. no, fuck you guys. Mm. I don't believe this shit. I believe this is bullshit, fabricated hype. Like, no, dude. I can't you know wait. what that bad feeling is? That bad feeling is his impending doom that he's going to be wrong. We'll find out. We're going to find especially, out. I'm gonna, especially I'm when it... It's gonna get one fucking episode. It's gonna get one fucking hour of my time, and I'm never. Uh, and, and if it fucking sucks, like, are you done? Well, the the, the first done? Well, the see, first step. Well, well actually, he has been sucking so much dick this morning, and you can't listen to me for two minutes. Fuck both of you. Fuck both of you. <laughs> Keep sucking your dick. Keep sucking that cock, dude. No, oh, I can't God. do. Okay. I can't do, okay. do that on YouTube. I can't do that on YouTube. This dude, this show has one hour to fucking this. This show literally has one hour of my entire life. Uh, if, the, it, the, if it doesn't, if it's not, there's the an star, hour and two minutes actually of the if first. It's not episode. the star spangled. If it's not the star spangled <laughs> ass fucking ass fucking that you two are fucking describing it as, it's never getting another another second of my life. I'm warning you right first now. Off, I, I never said it was star spangled ass fucking. Okay. Yeah, that's the, yeah, you did. You bent right the fuck over and took fucking all that fallout right up your fucking right up your glory hole, dude. I'm telling you, both of you, both no, of you. Is all fucking all I'm gonna shit. say, all I'm gonna right. say is that ass jerky ain't gonna make itself. All right. All right, we're gonna find out. I, I, it's got one hour. It's gonna have one hour of my time sometime in the next week. It's gonna have one. You hour know, of my it's. Time. I'm telling you, you 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 want to see a story of what you would be in 200 years, Jay? I wouldn't live 200 years, dude. Are you are you are you crazy? 
I don't know. I I don't know. That's Squilini. You think he would live 200 years? Nope. Yeah, Jay's too stubborn to fucking die. I, no, fuck no. I would. I yeah, would. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's not going to happen. Jay. That would be tw- I, I hope both of you realize, like, if I, li- like, living that long would be complete torture for me. Oh, I know. That would be complete. That's like, why it would horrific, happen to you. Horrific torture to me. That would just be like, that would be my, that would be a hell to me. That would be a, a version of hell. Like, that, having that, to live forever. Fuck that. It would, and, it, and it would happen. I'm telling you, because you feel like that with your luck, that's what's going to happen. I mean, the thing is, so ghouls were always a thing in the Fallout series. This specific ghoul character was not in the games whatsoever. Pretty much the premise of the ghoul is they're like a mutated human who just can't fucking die. He can't die, and he wants to. He's Jay. How do you kill like, him? Like, he can get How shot straight him? in the fucking heart, and it just, uh, he's got fucking Wolverine's healing factor. You want to know, you want to, you want to know how you, you want to know how you kill him? You stop yeah. giving him drugs. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, literally, literally ghouls survive, like, the old, the, the way they keep, mo- keep going is drugs. Like, when she trank darted his ass, and he's like... He goes, this ain't shit. He goes, there's just a little drug, there's just a little drop of drugs in this in this little little drum. And he's I mean, I the gore was fun. Um, the one guy, I mean, the one guy when he says you want to make my cock explode, and he didn't even know what the fuck that even meant <laughs> when he oh, was talking about Maximus. <laughs> yeah, like like the guy, and it's so funny because like it's kind of like a Star Wars thing, too. Like the knights can't have sex. The, Maximus doesn't know shit about sex. A whole town, a whole civilization got nuked uh, again. You know, that there, there was some good stuff. So, you know. Now I wonder if after all that shit, they still get solar eclipses. Oh my God. It, it, well, just make would, sure that before I, the solar eclipse, you don't tip a thousand bottle caps to anybody and then demand that you get your money back. If I had a thousand, if I had a thousand bottle caps, they're staying in my pocket. <laughs> bottle caps are going to go a long way soon. I promise you that. Yeah, we'll see. In in the Fallout world, bottle currency. caps are the currency. currency. I mean, well, you got to barter with something, right? Yeah, and and pre war money is all the it's it's all over the place too. So what happened with this lady with that that tipped a thousand dollars? So. She was one of those, you know, end of the world's coming. I'm going to get raptured when the eclipse happens. So she goes out to dinner. She goes out to dinner last week and then this weekend at the same restaurant. First time she goes, she tips $100 to the waitress. Second time she tips or she tips like it all totaled to like $1,000 total between these two tips. The second time she tipped seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars, which in the Bible is like the opposite of six six six. It's yeah. the you know, it's the holy number. So she tipped you know this thousand dollars in total, thinking she was going to get fucking raptured because of an eclipse, and and she tips the fucking money, doesn't get raptured, and then goes back to this fucking restaurant on Tuesday trying to demand the fucking tip money back and then tries to claim fraud and this and that and the other and the restaurant's like no like we didn't enter that that number for your tip because this restaurant when you pay they hand you the fucking credit card terminal and you fucking tap your card enter your tip amount all that on a digital fucking keypad yep and they're like this isn't fraud you said you wanted to tip that you tipped that. You're not getting the money back. And now it's become this whole fucking blown up thing because fucking Captain, I'm going to get raptured and doesn't get raptured, wants her fucking money back. And the restaurant's like, no, we you gave it to us fair and square. Like, there's nothing that states we have to give you this back. Um. And that's just that's just one prime example of how to not be a decent human being. 
if you honestly didn't mean to fucking give that type of money, you shouldn't have fucking done it to begin with. That's all there is to it. Whether you feel like you were going to get raptured or not, it's totally beside the fucking point here. Don't go tipping a fucking extravagant amount of money just to try to get it back because you don't get sucked up into the sky wormhole. I didn't get my powers either, by the way. Well, we fucking told you that, John. You weren't going to get powers. We told you that last weekend. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny how the eclipse happened in the day after they announced that Heroes was was possibly coming back too with the original cast? Yeah, kind of crazy. Pretty- yeah, I mean, the, look, it was kind of cool. Actually, did you see the picture I had posted of the eclipse? I think yeah. you said one yeah. in our group chat. Yeah, um, I don't. I I, I I remember seeing it, but. Um, I don't remember the exact the exact one you're you're talking about. I was stuck in fucking meetings at work. I wasn't able to fucking step outside to fucking go look at it. Yeah, it was. I was outside the whole time. I I have uh, sun filters for my cameras and stuff, so I was playing around with all my things. And here it is. I'll put it up for you guys. Now it's a beautiful scene, to be honest with you. Yeah. It was just it's so it was just so that's cool to be a, that is that's a very good picture i like thank that. you it, it's you know it was just I a cool experience a fucking, i borrowed a welding helmet from one of my neighbors in case i was able to make it out to look at it because i wasn't going to go about spend, that all the places around me were selling fucking eclipse glasses mm-hmm. the little fucking paper ones they were saying they didn't work fucking paper ones. yeah and a lot of people and, were saying they didn't work yeah, and some, you know, some people said they didn't work. Some people got ones that did work. And you want to know the easy solution? A fucking welding helmet. I never even thought of that. It's the same fucking thing. It is. He's right. He's right, you know. <laughs> I, I never, I never once thought of that. See, because like. You need the you need those those lenses to be able to protect you from the fucking light when you're welding, right? Yeah, that's correct. Otherwise, you're, you're, you get the blue spots. <laughs> yeah, no, like like Chris Baudet did, right? Yeah, fucking idiot. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, I saw what you wrote. Or or how about there was there's a video that came out after the eclipse, and it's a kid freaking out because. He took off his fucking damn eclipse glasses and looked at the fucking shit and then wasn't able to see. Lost his fucking vision. Mm. Uh, Dylan Mason, what up, my man? Let's talk about the number one Google search the next day. Why do my eyes hurt? Yeah, because you're fucking stupid. That's why. You know what I mean? Like, because because you literally did the exact opposite of what, like, you get told. That, you know to do during a fucking eclipse. You guys, you guys didn't do anything like special or anything. You guys were just chilling, right? Yeah, I mean, I went, I went out, I, I went out and had a couple pints at my uh, watering hole. I was, I mean, That's I was it. sitting in my fucking office working. I had the fucking, you know, my curtains and my blinds open, and the way I knew it had started and had ended was it got a little fucking dark and cloudy outside for. 30 fucking minutes and then boom it was bright as shit again right <laughs> so it's like, i didn't I even mean, with we had not we had 90 percent totality here in kansas city and it only got like it just the sky turned like a, a slightly different shade of blue it's a mm-hmm. darker it's like a darker shade yeah. of blue and that yeah. was at night and that was at 90 percent totality so it did yeah really- we were at 86 percent, and pretty much the same thing the, it just turned to a darker shade of fucking blue outside. It mm-hmm. looked like it looked like it got super cloudy, even though there were no clouds yeah. in the sky. I right. like the color but, tone. It was very post-apocalyptic. It very much so. Very yeah. much mm-hmm. so. But I mean, the thing is, like people at work, a lot of the people I work with, you know, being a fully remote company, a lot of people on my team were like, hey, I'm stepping away for you know 20, 30 minutes because their kids were home from school or whatnot because of the fucking eclipse and they were going outside with their kids to go look at it. And 
all that jazz and i'm just sitting at my fucking desk like i don't care i saw one seven years ago yeah all right so before we get to our news uh there was a death this week a major celebrity death and i think a lot of people were waiting for it and Um, finally tonight oj simpson can rest peacefully knowing that his wife knowing his wife's murderer has died (laughs) (laughs) it is i mean it's shocking and at the same time it's just like you know whoa like oh shit like we all jokingly say when was this gonna happen you know (laughs) but i like orange juice (laughs) orange juice is nice but he killed he he killed that poor woman and that poor and that poor old that poor man that was sleeping in the guest house no he wasn't sleeping no no dude no 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 that no he was like literally returning like her sunglasses from a restaurant ron goldman like didn't even fucking like barely know he didn't live there no that, no no listen that's how much you know i'm a fucking detective all right i don't give a fuck about oj i remember watching the goddamn white bronco chase on the tv like I literally remember well, I watching. Mean, we're also not Internet. all old as dirt, like you, Jay. I remember. So. I remember watching it. I remember watching it, and I remember when oh, Seinfeld yeah. made fun of it too. I remember when. I remember when, like, watching like every Weekend Update. Norm Macdonald would have at least one OJ joke in there, at least one. Mm-hmm. And it like culminated, like when he was found not guilty. It was culminated when Norm Macdonald came out and was just like, "It's official." Murder is legal in the state of California. Like, <laughs> like oh god, um, and ever since then I mean, it, it kind of fits, right? I was I was reading some articles after he passed this week, and you know OJ has had fucking arthritis or has arthritis. Well, at this yeah. point now had. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's and dead. Fuck him. the reason the reason the gloves didn't fucking fit is because he stopped taking his anti-inflammatory medication before the fucking trial so his hands were super fucking swollen there's all kind of, it, 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 the evidence I mean, yeah. basically, the evidence is basically overwhelming and they actually like district attorneys in California like changed how they do business and collect their evidence now because of fucking yeah. because of that trial yeah it would be like the evidence was fucking overwhelming like oj completely murdered the fuck out of both of those people it's a terrible tragedy and he fucking got away with it he got the fuck away with it like the mm-hmm. glove don't fit it don't fit you must have quit you know fucking fuck all that like it's just no <laughs> the he was a fucking, he was a, mur- he, he was a murderer he was yeah. a murderer yeah. the man was a fucking double murderer you know, it's like, it wasn't it wasn't even like all the all, all the stuff he did afterwards that got me so much. It was the fact that he committed double homicide with a knife. Two innocent people just dead. You know, yeah. One of them was like the mother of his children. Like, can you imagine doing that? Like to the mother of your fucking children? Like the evidence was there. But now let's get into some positive okay. stuff some news we got some military <laughs> stuff to talk about today Ooh, first one here yeah. the army has inked a significant sponsorship deal with the little known united football league the upstart minor league alternative to the nfl after internal reviews on the idea found the investment would be likely to yield new recruits in a meaningful way uh this is all coming in from military.com the roughly $11 million deal set the service up to be the premier partner for the league's inaugural season, which started last month and created a relationship between the Army and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, an owner of the league, a global celebrity and top tier online influencer. The deal was more than a year in the making and planning started before the league was formed by the merger and the two minor football leagues, the XFL and the USFL. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, so we'll, this we'll is find a, out. We'll find out if there's if there's any dividends from it. So, and then that means that the Navy will never fucking be this again. Never. Eh, eh. Meh. Eh. All right, all right. Eh. Um, next one: fifty-five Coast Guard Academy cadets have been disciplined in a cheating scandal. Oh, here we go. 
Officials at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy say that they have disciplined 55 second class cadets who shared the answers to two homework assignments last fall in the nautical science course. An Academy spokesman said Friday that the cadets distributed answers related to navigation assignments in the required course for graduation in clear violation of Academy policy. The U.S. Coast Guard Academy is committed to upholding the highest standards of integrity, honor, and, ac- and accountability, Captain Edward Hernandez, commander of cadets, said in a statement. Misconduct like this undermines trust, and those found to have violated our principles were held accountable for their actions. And following the investigation, six cadets found to have a significant amount of involvement in the collusion received failing threats, while 38 were given lower grades. 11 were removed from command positions that had earned this coming summer supporting training of the incoming SWAB class. And lastly, a total of 55 cadets, including one who was not enrolled in the course but was involved in the information exchange, were restricted to the academy grounds and will undergo a 20-week honor remediation program. Hmm. Thoughts on this? Don't fucking cheat. I, I, know, I know we joke around yeah. and say, like, if you aren't cheating, you aren't trying, but if you have to cheat to fucking succeed, you're not going to be a good mm-hmm. leader. You will not be a good leader. You will not make a good leader. You'll make a fucking you'll make a fucking backstabber who is willing to crawl over the fucking bodies of his friends to make the next rank. We don't need fucking cheaters as officers ever on in in, in any branch ever. Yeah. If you have to fucking cheat to succeed, fucking pick a different goddamn job. Like that being an office being an officer ain't for you. We we already have enough fucking officers that have fucked over enough people. You know what I mean? Like we, we've been doing that for 200 fucking almost 200 fucking 25 years, 250 that, years. That's right. You know what I mean, like we've been doing that for almost 250 years. We know when we get, when we get it, when we get the bad seats on the officer side, they get, they get, they get taken out. Okay. Yep. If you're going to be an officer, like you will be held to a much higher standard. Okay, and as a, as a former non commissioned officer, freaking, I will hold you to like that standard. Like, if you're gonna be an officer, don't be a fucking piece of shit. That's right. If you're a piece of shit, don't be a fucking officer. And mm-hmm. pretty easy. Yeah, and with all the with now we've seen a lot of helicopter deaths and crashes within the last what two three years. Yeah, give or take, yeah. it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, the army will have its helicopter pilots conduct additional hours of training after a rash of dozen crashes that has killed 10 service members just October alone. We've seen a tr- we've seen a troubling trend with our accident rates, and certainly any loss of life is a hundred percent unacceptable. Major General Walton Rugen, director of Army Aviation, told reporters in a brief press conference Wednesday. And then, obviously, even when we have accidents that we lose the aircraft or severely damage the aircraft, we consider that unacceptable too. Uh, this is, I mean, we, we, we've been hearing about the Ospreys. We've been hearing about the helicopters. We've been seeing the videos and, you know, we're, we're losing soldiers. We're losing soldiers. And on top of that, um, we're, what, what do we call the collateral damage? Um, it, you know, in case, you know, a helicopter crashes into a civilian home or that matter, or somewhere on the base where there's a building with a couple people in it. This is a problem. Do you guys have any ideas of what you would do if you were in command to fix this? Well, you have to, first off, you have, you have to find out if the problem is systemic or if it's, if it's something that is like, uh, mm-hmm. I, I would like, you wouldn't call it like, them coincidental, but it's like, is it actually like an army wide problem or, did a few helicopters crash in a short amount of time at three different locations completely in three different units. And it was just bad timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. If there is, if there is a systemic problem, yes, you need to identify what's, what's creating mechanical issues, what's creating, you know, pilot fatigue or whatever. Right. I mean, that's just that that's kind of where I would start. I would say that's where I would start if I was in command, I guess. Joe, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, really, it's trying to figure out the the root cause before you can really solve it. Is it systemic? Is it like what 
that's that's you got to you got to get to the root cause. There's a lot of there's a lot of RCA that goes into it, root cause analysis to just pinpoint mm-hmm. what the exact problem is. Is it you know, we're understaffed on our fucking pilots. Are our pilots fucking tired and fatigued a lot because we don't have enough helicopter pilots? What What's causing the problem? Because until you know what the root of the problem is, you can't ever fix it. And that's why it took them so long to get the fucking Ospreys like unfucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, there's, so, and those, are, those are still diffi- difficult aircraft to fly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, that's exactly. like there's no there's no clear cut like you can just fucking solve a problem overnight it's never gonna fucking happen from any any perspective whether like both me and jay being you know ncos and shit when we were in part of our job was figuring out how to fix problems on a troop level basis and you never can fix shit overnight you know you're always going to have, there's always going to be problems and there's a lot that goes into fixing them. And, you know, being a, being a leader and all that in the civilian sector, even like I've got, I've got management and leadership experience out the fucking ass at this point in my life. And you can never solve anything overnight. You always have to look at, you got to look at it with an open mind and from multiple different angles to figure out what the problem is, what the source of the problem is to get to the solution. And you might try to make, you know, some changes and then those changes don't fucking fix shit. And then you're reverting back and then you're making different changes. So, you know, you, you just have to always be vigilant and evolve in your thought process and your thinking when coming at a problem to try to figure out a solution yeah absolutely absolutely so i i really hope that uh these things get settled and now our last news of the day i mean we got to give it to uh command commander cameron yeast of the of the u.s navy with this uh banger right here um this is one of the funniest things i'm gonna i'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and then i'll i'll make it small but look at that look at that <laughs> fucking dumbass yeah now leave it to the navy to do some shit like that now first things first what's the first like and i remember i wrote to you guys and jay you said something about the way he was handling the weapon right yeah like i could see and, that it back up real quick make it bigger And sorry, Jake. Go. No, you're fine. Like, please cover me up. I know I'm ugly. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, go ahead, Jay. No, I, my when one the first thing that I saw a lot of people kind of commenting on, like we'll we'll get to the optic later. Uh, yeah. was, how, was how he had it up against his shoulder. Yeah, the shouldering of it. The that, foregrip is way too close to the fucking mag. How, however, comma, however, comma, there's one thing that people always forget with M4s and M16s. They don't exactly have a lot of kick. So I was like, I was a little bit hesitant at first to be too, to critique too much because I'm like, okay, they're on a boat. It's doing this, you know, like, and you're trying to like keep a beat on something. I could see a little bit of, in the infantry, we call that shooter's preference. Like how you kind of hold, how you kind of hold and wield a shooter's preference. Do you want to? Do you want like a a, a a foregrip, or like like for me, like I use a freaking, I use like a C clamp, like I use a freaking, like. But that's just shoot, that's shooter's preference. Yeah, that's all that is. That's all that is, and that's yeah. So I was like, okay, the shoulder. I saw some people bitching about the shoulder, and I was like, eh, it doesn't exactly have a lot of kick. So as long as you've got it kind of nudged into something, whatever. John, tell me about the fucking optic. So the optic. That's what, that's what everybody fucking started bitching about. Like, yeah, so so it's backwards. Yeah, and if you v- guys don't V-cog. see it. It's a V-cog. It's, 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 it's backwards, it's backwards and I don't give a shit. There is no shooter's preference when it comes to a fucking optic. So yeah. There is one way they work and one way only. And if you put the fucker on there backwards, you're getting what I like to call the car mirror effect of oh, objects oof. maybe closer than they fucking seem. <laughs> yeah. 
it's it's so <laughs> funny because like I was looking I was looking at the photo while waiting like you know waiting for some parts of my PC and stuff and I was scrolling I was like what the fuck I was like that doesn't look right and then like the the comments started rolling in yeah. and one one guy was like please take this down you're embarrassing the navy right now um i actually got a couple things here like someone said here man the scope is annoying but that grip placement is downright wild <laughs> yeah that's usually you would have your grip a little bit farther but the, uh, shooter's yeah. preference but normally you your the grip the foregrip would be a little bit farther out yeah totally right. i mean even in the nerf gun too so like, so just, i'm gonna I'm going to zone in real quick on, on the, you know, foregrip and the shouldering of it. A, we're using the M4 platform. So, and yes, there is shooter's preference. Everybody has their preferred way. However, me, ideally, foregrip, because we're looking at, it's the Navy on a ship on the fucking water. If we're looking at the, that scenario, and let's say you're having to do room clearing on a fucking boat. I would still have the foregrip further down the fucking mm -hmm. cheat guard. And instead of extending out the fucking st buttstock, I would leave the buttstock fully in mm. instead of extended out because it's a collapsible fucking buttstock. It is. So that way I have what, it. Closer. What he has, what he, what he has is collapsible. I can see it. I can yep. see it from here. And he's got yeah. it extended all the way too. And he's he got it extended all the way out. So what I would do is have it collapsed, so I have better control, and I have that closer fucking in like he's wanting it, versus having it up here on my fucking shoulder. I would have it collapsed, so I've still got it, you know, tight into my body. And and you and and the and the the way the way you the way you figure all that stuff out is put by putting rounds down range right like you mm -hmm. like by, by practicing yeah it's pretty obvious by this picture he hasn't practiced in a while yeah so, so yep. um some people are I mean, saying it's been a while since i've shot one and i still someone, fucking like that would be my preferred like sorry. someone said someone said no you're good someone said 100 percent the armor set that up as a prank <laughs> i do i i, I it's embarrassing. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty it, embarrassing. It's pretty fucking embarrassing. Yeah. And I mean, then, uh, the thing is, he's, he, you said he's a commander, right? Yeah, he's the commander of the ship. He's not yeah. just a sailor. So, so he's the not armor just, is totally you know, fucking with the damn CO. That's what's happening here. I don't care who you are. Whoever set that weapon system up for him and then handed it to him knew he was gonna get fucking yeah. laughed at for that shit. Yeah, but so it's, the, not, dude, it's 2024. Like, we can't. That shit went out like in public, so like the armor kind of fucked that up too. Like if that was if that's the case, that's a bad look on the armor because it's like, dude, like that shit went public. Like, yeah, and it's funny too, and it's gone now. And they wrote back by state the U.S. Navy said, "Thank you for pointing out our rifle scope error in the previous post. Picture has been removed until EMI is completed." What's EMI? I thought you would know. I'm not. I was in the Navy, so. That's what gotta is, be a navy thing. Let's see what is EMI US Navy personal okay. loan EMI calculator. Um, no, I don't need money. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, that was one of the funniest things that happened this week. I mean, what a crazy week! Um, there's, the spring EMI is, here. is what the EMI is a proven training technique used to correct a deficiency in an individual's performance of military duties. Yeah, so someone probably got in trouble for that one. Uh, and Surprise. Mm, Surprise. Mm, mm. All right. Well, guys. All right, boys. Um, All right, just, boys. You How already know what time it is. And it's always who wants it? Is someone taking it today? I can take it today. I've I've been I've it. been I've been slowly but surely like creeping back into the game and i'm like you've been you've been so positive i wouldn't even have been able to tell oh without without negative i was today about fallout are you kidding me like i know we okay so okay full 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 full, full disclosure we john we talk about this all the time on the oh, show oh i know and we fuck with each other i go kayfabe sometimes and I oh, was, i know i was definitely playing 
the role that I you see I, now I, did that. I know like, this. That That's was, why now now you're gonna make me work and edit this part out to make it look good, dude. Dude, like I'm probably <laughs> I'm probably gonna watch this shit and probably like it. I mean, what do you want me to fucking say? What do you want me to fucking say? You okay, with the character. It Jay, doesn't make for a point. Fun. It doesn't make for a good show if Jay is never fucking angry. For some reason, people have like like they react love to it. My anger. They react. They love to my it. Fucking anger. I don't know why. I mean, it's fucking true. It, Jay's anger no, is really one of the is. fucking concepts of the show. Like it, it like it really like it, part of. And the- that's where me and John we come into play because we push the fuck. We know how to push the fucking buttons. Push the buttons get, like just, to just get that version of Jay to come out. I'm pushing the wrong ones, and then the rest of us are pushing the right ones. And sometimes I go, and sometimes I go kayfabe. Just, no, it's just to give just just to fucking add some flavor. And it's funny too, because because some people are we're probably watching like, oh man, the, the guys look kind of uncomfortable. No, no, no we're not, not uncomfortable. Do, have you guys sat with Jay? <laughs> have you broken bread with me? <laughs> yeah, look, look, not look yet. that's happening bear. in May. Look, my man, <laughs> my man, Bear. I watch for Angry Jay. Like it's thank you, fucking thank you, Big Gris. Thank you. Because look, the, the formula is you can't just have three nice guys sitting at the table, you know, giving g- giving each fucking other salt. Boring. You know what I mean? Boring. Like there has always has to be one guy at the table that's that has to fuck up the mood. And if you don't have that Jay one guy that's fucking up the mood, like Jay is definitely our fucking Judas. Oh, oh yeah, shit! Dude. Oh yeah, bro. I'll sell you. <laughs> I'll, sell, I'll sell both of you. I'll sell both of your asses so far down the river, dude. Like. Like first opportunity, first opportunity. Ten pieces, oh, ten God. pieces of silver, ten pieces of silver, mother. I've been waiting for the perfect time to use that fucking comment too. Like, it's it's been brewing for the past two years that I've been on this show with you fuckers. You know I've been waiting so long. You know it's going to be so funny. Thank God that we don't have like a hundred people watching, or or I mean, it's been kind of weird people lately. It's been fluctuating, out. but like people will be like, "Oh, they're they're comparing themselves to the apostles." Like, no, 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 <laughs> no. In, in no way, shape, or form are we doing that. We're we're, we're we're good we're good at the English language and 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 use of like metaphor and like you know stuff like that. So. Yeah, I watch the shows and I respect what these guys are doing. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Look, I mean, look, I got my I got my affirmations right here. Okay, don't get right. You know, we're good to go. I'm not an apostle. I'm just a, a just a child of the man. That's all. I'm, I'm not I'm not a believer. And if you don't and if you don't like me for it, like forgive me or something. I don't fucking know. It's not my religion, yeah. you know. Like, how about what a concept, you know? F- f- follow, yeah. follow, what, follow what's in your own book. You know, first. and before we get to the final thought, too, I think it's awesome. I think that's also something to convey. Like, even in the military, like, we don't care what color you are. We don't care what religion don't you're care. part of. Don't give a fuck. You know, matter. we we don't we don't care what you eat at night or or who you're sleeping with. You know, like. Not my business. And it, and I just really, it's just so interesting how, like, when we're in uniform, we understand that concept. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, mm-hmm. yeah, you have a lot of people who don't join the military or have to join the military and able to get that concept. But very much so. That is very yeah. much so. Very, there are a lot of people. People, there's a lot of people that get, they get a, a, a wild ass wake up call. When they join the military, yeah, and, and depend depending on their their standing in society or where they ca- depending on where they came from, depending on what region they're from, uh, their upbringing, whatever, um, you see a lot of people get a very rude awakening. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you see a lot of people get a rude awakening when they get into the military. Like, r- branch, br- you know, branch is irrelevant. The military will change you. In some ways, because that's just it's what it does. It's what it's supposed to do. It no mm-hmm. shit. Thank you. That you're goddamn right, John. Fucking a. Like that's, that's it's literally and like, it works. It, fucking a. Fucking a. Can't can't fucking deny that shit. It can't works. Fucking deny that shit. And and on that note, man, like kick it off, Jay. No, you know what, man. I'll tell you what. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately and we've talked, we've talked on this show, uh, not, not necessarily at length because we, we don't normally get too personal on here. Like we get, 
we get personal sometimes, but we don't get overly personal. Uh, we have mentioned, we have talked uh, several times that, you know, and, I, and I'm not afraid to admit it, like that I, I do go to therapy. I do see people for the things that are uh, going on in my head, right? Um, and I've been doing some thinking lately and I've, I've had a couple months to just kind of like let the dust settle in my life and, you know, kind of like ride a little bit less of a wave. I still get hit with fucking emotional shit all the time. I still get fucking crushed and drowned uh, in the middle of the day for no reason. Um, And it's hard to describe what that feels like, but we've all been there. You know what I mean? And it fucks me up. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where it's like, sometimes we have to take a step back and it's like, do I need to do something else? Is, you know, like the, the, the metaphorical medicine that I'm taking right now, is it not working? Because if the metaphorical medicine that I'm taking is not working, then we need to do something different to solve the problem. Like we, like me and Joe were talking about earlier. If you want to solve the problem, you have to do something that is actually going to solve the fucking problem. That's right. So if the metaphorical medicine you're taking, regardless of what that medicine is, if it ain't fucking working, what are you going to do? Okay. If you're not taking any medicine, does that mean you need to take some? Or do you need to talk to somebody? Like, I don't know. And every week on this show, like we like to encourage everyone, talk to somebody, talk, talk to yourself sometimes. And I'm not talking about like getting like, you know, hoo-ha crazy about it, but ask yourself what you need. Identify, identify uh, weak points and strong points um, in your own, in your own life, in your own arena. You know what I mean? And reinforce the strong points. And shore up the fucking weak points. Sometimes that's all we can do. But recognizing where those things are is really a lot of times like 98% of all of it. It's literally just preparation for the eventual battle to come. There will be, there, there will be days that we have that are bad days. They are going to come 100% guaranteed we're going to have fucking bad days. Okay, if, if you are a human being on planet Earth, there is a 100% chance you're going to have some really, really, really bad fucking days. You have an obligation to yourself and the people that you love to, to do something about it. Either A, solve the problem, or B, fucking keep moving. Okay? Call your friends. Call your homies. Call your family. Okay? Call someone who cares. If you can't find nobody to call, you can text or call 988 you can dial 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Okay? We've said it on this show a million times. It is not, this is not kayfabe. You can contact us. Okay? And we will, we will, we will, we will get back with, with you. None of us are licensed behavioral health specialists, but we will listen. Okay? If it's that fucking bad, if it is that fucking goddamn bad, we will listen because we do care. Okay. One of the reasons, one of the reasons that we do this show the way in the format that we do it is because instead of asking you guys for five more minutes or 24 more hours, we ask you for fucking seven. We ask you for a whole week, every week. Mm-hmm. That, that was, that's, that is a built in part of like one of the concepts of this show. Every week we do this. This is the final thought because we're here, because we're fucking here right now. Okay. We all know, we all know, you know, human eventuality, you know, 10 out of 10 people, we're all going to die someday. It does not need to be fucking today. Okay. It does not need to be, uh, us, uh, removing ourselves from the equation. So if you are, if you are having a, a crisis, if you're getting hit with an emotional wave and the little raft that you're in, in the middle of the ocean is tipped over and you feel like you're drowning, Call somebody. Reach the fuck out. You guys can do this. All right? But, yeah, I love you guys. Freaking, like, we got this shit. I expect to see everybody in 168 hours, okay, next week. We're going to do this shit until fucking somebody reaches their hand down from either the heavens or the hells above and below us. All right? And we're going to freaking just keep having fun, okay? And that's what we're going to – that's what the fuck we're going to do. All right. We, we ain't no goddamn sons of bitches here. 
All right. We don't fuck around. We don't play. All right. So like, and this is not kayfabe either. We just don't play. I don't hang out with people. I don't know about you guys personally. I don't hang out with people that play. Okay. I don't hang out with people that play. Kids play. Thank you. Fucking thank yep. you, John. Thank you, Joe. I, I trust me. I know. And me and me and John have me and John and to us to a, to a lesser extent, me and Joe have, have had a couple of conversations about this where it's like, no, we're not playing today. We're not. No, it's not funny anymore. You know what I mean? It's not funny losing friends. It's not funny losing people to things that, that could possibly have been uh, slightly altered and or completely changed. With 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 what I with what I what I would call a minimal amount of effort, a minimal amount of effort, yep, can go such a long way. But it also starts with recognizing what's in yourself and the strength that you have uh, to change your own destiny. Okay, and choose choose life, choose life. That's the best advice I can ever give. Yeah. Is just fucking even if it even if it is for five more minutes or for twenty four more hours. Okay, yeah, choose fucking life. Always. Always choose life. Bet 100% of the time on life. It gets better fucking later. I don't know always when or how or why, but it does. We would not We would not know how fucking bad uh, our grief and our terror and our bad feelings are if we didn't also have the good feelings on the opposite side of that. Yep. So I'll shut right. the fuck up. John, Joe, <laughs> I love you guys. Fucking it's always a pleasure. It's good to see you guys. Again. Always. Love Every Sunday. Guys. We never skip a beat. We'll see you guys next week. Next week, guys. You got 168.